Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs, and I welcome you all in this video. So let's quickly begin with our first question. But before jumping onto the first question, let me inform you that you all can get the PDF of the session on the Telegram group that we have, and the link of that Telegram group is in description below. So you can join the group and get the PDF of our session and. If you like our session during the course of the session, then do not forget to like the session as well as subscribe our channel. So now let's move on to the first question. Okay, so which portal has been launched by the Ministry of MSME to increase MSME exports by fifty percent in twenty twenty? Expo India, Niryat Bhushan, Prashulk. India exports Expo Bharat. So these are the options out of which option D, India exports is the right answer. So recently, Ministry of MSME has launched the India exports initiative as well as this portal India Export in order to increase the exports by MSMEs and thus increasing the contribution of MSMEs in the overall export sector of. India. So, what is uh, this initiative all about? Let's discuss that. So, the very first thing is that we have a target of exporting goods worth US dollar four hundred billion this year only, and combining this year and next year's export, then we have a cumulative target of US dollar five hundred billion. The overall target that we have is to increase our exports. To US dollar one trillion by the year 2027, and guys, since we have a large base of MSMEs, medium and small enterprises in India, therefore they can play a major role in achieving this one trillion export target. And therefore, in order to help in achieving this target, only this initiative and this portal has been launched. So that is the basic purpose why this initiative and portal have been launched now. How are they going to help the MSMEs in actuality, in reality? So basically, they will provide information about the tariff relief to the MSMEs because tariff play a major role in the exports. And if the MSMEs will get pure knowledge, complete knowledge about the relief measures that they are getting on tariffs on exports, then obviously. They will uh, they will be encouraged to export more. So basically, this portal and this initiative under this initiative, information regarding the tariff lines will be provided to the MSMEs, and the portal will become the mechanism, the medium through which the information will be departed. Okay, so uh, information regarding a total of four fifty six tariff lines will be provided. To the MSMEs via this portal, and as I have told you in the question itself, it was mentioned that India's target is to increase the contribution or the total exports by MSMEs by fifty percent uh, by the year twenty twenty two. So that is the basic target. Now you need to understand here that the this does not mean that the contribution of msmes will be increased to 50% in the overall exports of india no it means that whatever is the level of exports by the msmes in india that will be increased by 50% by 2022 so at present msmes contribute 40% in the overall exports of india so this if we increase this by 50% then the overall contribution should be 60% by 2020 Two. I hope that this is understandable to you. Okay, so this is the repeated statement here again. Now, do remember that we have more than sixty-three million MSMEs in India, which contribute nearly forty percent in the overall India's exports, and this will be enhanced by fifty percent. That means forty percent plus twenty percent, sixty percent will be the contribution. in exports by the msmes by next year that is the target for for achieving which this portal and this initiative has been launched by the ministry of msme okay now the contribution in the goods in the manufacturing is 6.11% and in the services sector the contribution of msmes is 24.63% okay so this is the contribution in the gdp given by the msmes in the respective sectors of goods and services i hope that this initiative and this portal is now clear to you 
that's why I'm moving on to the next question. What is, uh, sorry, who is the new chairman of the expert group on minimum wages? S.P. Mukherjee, Arvind Singh, R.K. Dhawan, Ganji, um, Kamal, Vardhan Rao, Varun, Menon. So these are the options. Out of these, right answer is option A, S.P. Mukherjee. So guys, this group was constituted this year only and right now the chairperson of this group has been changed or basically this group has been reconstituted with new members being added to the group the reason behind reconstituting this group is that the ministry of labor and employment wants the results early that's why they have reconstituted this committee that is not something that we need to focus on we need to focus on the chairman and the new members who have been included plus was there any other committee as well on the national floor wages yes so we will be covering that as well so let's move on to the details new chairman is sp mukherjee now regarding sp mukherjee you need to know that he is the emeritus professor at kolkata university okay new members who are included are arup mitra from the institute of economic growth rupa chanda from indian institute of management bangalore the group was constituted this year only to determine the national floor wage under the code on wages 2019 and sensing ministry of labor wanted the result the results early therefore they have reconstituted the committee so that they can prepare the recommendations early now guys this is the second committee that has been formed under the codes on wages 2019 in order to set the national minimum floor wages national floor wages basically now what was the first group and what were the recommendations given by the first group let's have a look at that so this was the committee anup satpathi committee in 2019 this committee gave its recommendations which were rejected by the central government so what were the recommendations recommendations are also important for you to know because they can also be asked from you in the examination Although they are rejected, but still they hold relevance because the new recommendations have not come out yet. Okay, so this Anup Satpathi committee recommended to have a minimum wage of 375 per day and a monthly salary of 9,750. So that was a national minimum wage recommended by Anup Satpathi committee. In addition to the monthly pay, the panel also suggested to have a housing alliance of rupees 1430 for the city based worker so this was recommended in order to reduce the stress level among the migrant city workers so these were the major recommendations of the anup satpati committee that were rejected by the government so that was all about that question now let's discuss the third question what is the name of the kit launched by All India Institute of Ayurveda for boosting the immunity of the children against SARS-CoV-2 that is the virus of Corona. So Bal Raksha Kit, Bal uh, Prati Raksha Kit, Bal Nirogya Kit, Bal Ayush Kit, Bal Ayurveda Kit. So these are the options out of these options Bal Raksha is the right answer. So this is the kit that has been launched by this All India Institute of Ayurveda which is under the Ministry of Ayush. Now, as we all know that the third wave of Corona can be there in India. So in the um, wake of the third wave, this kit has been launched. So this has not been disbursed yet. They will disburse or distribute these kits on a special day. And that day is the National Ayurveda Day. Okay, so these kits will be distributed on national ayurveda day, day on november 2nd and 10000 kits are there that will be distributed now this kit comprise cypress oh sorry uh, syrup syrup is there in this kit okay and this syrup is made up of basil giloy cinnamon etc etc so these are the elements of this syrup that will boost the immunity of children apart from this syrup there would be the swan Swan Prashan also. Okay, so Swan Prashan also will be given to the children because this will enhance the overall health of the children. Okay, now you have to remember that this kit has been manufactured by the Indian Medicines Pharmaceutical Corporation 
in Uttarakhand. So this is an important point, guys. Can become a question in your exam. Next is the director of this institution. So that is an additional information, but relevant as well. This can also be asked. Now do remember that apart from this Bal Raksha kit, this institution has already provided the Swastha Raksha kit, Arogya Raksha kit, and Ayu Raksha kit. So these are the three kits that have already been developed by this institution and dispersed among the population, the citizens of India. And this is how this Bal Raksha kit looks. Okay, so you can have a look at it. Moving on to the next question. What is India's rank in the Digital Quality of Life Index 2021? So, here the right answer is 59th. India's rank is 59th out of 110 countries. This index is released by, an, by a cyber security organization which is named as Surf Shark. Do remember the organization's name as well. And this is based in British Virgin Islands. Okay, so this place reminds me of the recent leak of the Pandora papers. However, they are not very relevant for your phase one examination. Therefore, I have skipped that uh, issue. I, and I don't think that they will be asked in your phase two as well. But in those recent leaks, they, it was found that this was the region where many Indians have hidden their black money. So that's why this is the tax haven where the Indians have their money. So that reminds me, this place reminds me that. Achha, chaliye. Let's come back to this index. So this Digital Quality of Life Index 2021 has been released and 110 countries were assessed. Last year, it was 85 countries. Now the number of countries and the scope of this index has been increased. Denmark is at the top, whereas India is at the 59th position, which is a downgrade by two positions. Uh, from the last year's index and we can see that the number of countries in the last year's index was less in comparison to this year therefore we can just proportionate the rank okay that is something that we should not pay our attention to the thing that we need to focus on is that india's rank is 17th in asia if we compare the countries in asian region only then india stands at the 17th position when it comes to the digital quality of life now how are they measuring the digital quality of life in countries so let's have a look at the parameters first internet affordability internet quality electronic infrastructure electronic security electronic government okay so these are the parameters on which a country's uh, performance has been ranked. So Denmark is first in the internet affordability, whereas India is at the 47th rank. In internet quality, South Korea is the first. India is at the 67th rank. Electronic infrastructure, Denmark is the top. India is at the 91st rank. So also we do not have a very robust electronic infrastructure at present and we need to work on it next is in electronic security so greece has topped this uh, parameter or this sub index whereas india is at the 36th position which is also a very uh, we can say good ranking for india at present obviously we need improvement in that as well electronic government us is at the top and india is at the 33rd position okay so as we can see that the worst that india has performed is in this parameter or in this sub index that is electronic infrastructure and the ranking is 91st so do remember the worst and the best and the best is this electronic government this is important they can directly ask you india's rank in this sub index in the digital quality of life index okay so do remember now let's discuss this so within the parameters there are sub parameters or we can say indicators and these are certain indicators on which india has performed best and these are certain indicators on which india has performed worst so let's have a look at the sub indices or sub parameters we can say on which india has performed the best so broadband internet stability india's rank is 21st mobile affordability 24th online services index again 24th rank in mobile speed 
India is at the 109th ranking. So mobile speed is really poor in India. If we compare the countries that are present in this index, that is a total number of 110 countries. The number of internet users, 95th. So still we need to increase the number of internet users. This might be because we have a large uh, section of rural population in India that do not use the uh, mobile. Not exactly the rural population, but the people who do not have adequate digital literacy. So they cannot use the internet. Next is network readiness index. So India's rank is 84th in this index or in this sub parameter we can say. Moving on to the next question, with which company has Ministry of Labor and Employment partnered for enhancing the youth employability? So basically this question is asking you about the name of the portal. Okay, so this question has been mistakenly framed, which is the portal. Basically, what is the name of the portal that the Ministry of Labor and Employment has launched for enhancing the youth employability and the name of the portal is Digi Saksham. Okay, so this portal has been launched in partnership with Microsoft India. Now, what is the purpose? This portal aims to enhance the digital skills of the youth and the focus will be on the semi-urban people and the rural youth. Now, in the semi-urban area, also the people who have lost their jobs due to COVID or the people who are seeking jobs. So, training in the digital skills will be provided to them at the priority basis. However, this scheme or this portal basically has been launched in order to provide the digital skill, base, skill set to the uh, targeted population. But the priority is the job seekers. Okay. Now, training will be provided at the model career centers and national career service centers for SC and STs. So these are the two locations where the training will be provided and at the ground level, Aga Khan Rural Support Program India, this will be, this entity will be implementing this training program and the job seekers can get their training via this national career service portal of the Ministry of Labor. So this is the digital Saksham platform that has been launched and under this platform basically the digital skills will be provided to the rural and semi-urban youth. That is the basic idea behind launching this Digi Saksham program. And guys do remember the name of the organization with which this ministry has partnered that is Microsoft India. So that's all for today guys. I hope that you have enjoyed the session and if you have then do not forget to subscribe our channel and like this video. Thank you so much.